Welcome back everyone. The Mac Studio ended up coming out and luckily for you, I got my hands on one or unluckily for you. So I'll give you a quick breakdown on how to use this Mac Studio. Now, it's a very premium machine, $2,000. Luckily for you, this thing is going to last you for a very long amount of time. So it's not like tomorrow this thing's going to be outdated. Very powerful, huge fan. Depending on whether you got the M1 Max or M1 Ultra, they're both very powerful machines. This is the base model. The main difference besides the speed and everything like that is that the two front ports here, you do have you know, two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the M1 Ultra. This one on the M1 App Max, these are just standard USB Type-C ports, so data transfer, everything like that. You do have an SD card slot on the front of your Mac Studio as well, and this is great. If you're trying to go ahead and actually, you know, put, you know, your storage or anything, or you have cameras or anything, and you want to just go and put the storage right here, you have that front slot, which is really cool. You have the Apple logo up top. Apparently, the top half or something is like a ginormous fan, so you still have really good, you know, cooling on this thing. There's nothing on the left side of this Mac Studio. On the right side, we don't have anything as well. And on the back side, this is where all of our ports are. So if you're new to ports or anything, essentially this top portion, it kind of doubles as I think like a speaker, but also there's, you know, the cooling back here. So it lets out any hot air or anything like that. Cool air comes in and hot air comes out. So keep that in mind. You have four Thunderbolt ports on the back. So these are great if you want to dock up, you know, not only extra storage and other devices, data transfer, for, but also if you want to connect monitors as far as I can tell I think you can plug in four 6k displays and like an extra 4k monitor something like that so this thing has a ton of power which can power all those other displays now you have an ethernet port here which is great if you want to just plug in actual internet versus connecting to a wi-fi connector you do have the AC power connector right here. This is where you plug in the power. Thunder, you do have two USB type A ports, which are great if you have those standard bigger ports. You can connect them right here. You have an HDMI port and you have a headphone jack as well. HDMI is great if you want to plug in a monitor. The monitor I have is an HDMI, as you can tell from this back cable right there. You have a headphone jack too, which is great. You can plug in an eight headphone jack and pretty much move on from there. And you have the power button as well. Now on the bottom of the Mac Studio, it's nothing super crazy. You still have this grill at the bottom, which, you know, I think takes in air. You have, you know, the Mac Studio emblem right here. But typically you shouldn't really see the bottom of this Mac at all. But it is a pretty heavy machine. And apparently the M1 Ultra one is a much, you know, heavier than this one. Now I have already set up my Mac Studio the first time and I already went through the beginning process. So like I mentioned, if you're new to it, basically it's going to bring in a bunch of personal information and stuff. You can connect your iCloud account. I saved you the boredom of having to do that. But one big thing I want to note is that as soon as you go ahead and link up your Mac Studio, I'll go ahead and show you a quick setup. So quickly, this AC adapter is what you're going to go ahead and plug into the back of the Mac Studio. So if we bring our Mac Studio to the back, you'll see this little connector right here. Once this is plugged into the one side, all you want to do is you want to go ahead and plug in your AC adapter to the back portion right here. And that will basically allow you to go ahead and bring power to your specific Mac Studio. Now on top of that, what I would always recommend doing is getting a monitor handy already. You won't be able to use this unless you have a monitor. So even using something like an HDMI connector right here is great. So what I'd recommend doing is grabbing, you know, HDMI cable, plug it into the other side of your monitor and pretty much plug it into the back of your Mac Studio right here. And you can plug in an HDMI, you can plug in a Thunderbolt, just depends what you want. And you'll see my monitor will go and turn on. Now on top of that, you will need a keyboard or a magic mouse in order to actually use this. The Mac Studio doesn't come with them, I don't think built in. But if you have an extra magic mouse, magic keyboard, anything like that, typically what I do is just grab my lightning cable like this and I plug it to the back of my specific Mac Studio, just like so. You can grab the other end of your lightning cable right here and you can go and plug in your magic mouse by plugging into the bottom here and turning it on this way. Or you can also grab your magic keyboard just like so and you can plug it in this way as well. So it does need a plugged in method at first, but after you can go ahead and use a you know wireless method after plugging it in. Now, once you're ready to go, you can go ahead and power up your Mac Studio. Now there's a speaker built into the Mac Studio too. So what you can do is you can go and click in the Mac Studio power button right there. You will hear it plug in just like this and turn on. On the front of the Mac Studio, you do have an LED indicator. So this will go ahead and tell you when the Mac Studio is on or when it's off. And once it goes ahead and powers on, you're pretty much good to go. Now at this point, what you can do is I can go ahead and unplug my USB type port at the back and I'm ready to go. Now the rest of this video is going to give you a quick breakdown of pretty much how to use the Mac Studio pretty much and Mac OS. So if you're not new to Mac OS, then you can pretty much skip the rest of this video. But if you're new to Mac OS, pretty much this is the layout of Mac OS. Now up top, you do have your taskbar, your status bar essentially. And what this allows you to do is quickly access, you know, the 
different static things within macOS. This stays consistent and this dock pretty much stays consistent. You can configure it however you want to. So on the top left, you have your little Apple logo. This will allow you to find out more about your Mac. So in this case, we do have our Mac Studio. I'd recommend going here every once in a while and you can see what software version you're on. You can also update your macOS version on your Mac Studio as well, which I'd recommend doing every once in a while. I'll go and click the X button for now. You can also see how many displays you have connected. So in this case, I have this like whatever 1440p display, nothing crazy, HDMI cable included. <laughs> and under storage, you can go ahead and actually configure and see how much storage you have left. So it looks like I have, I guess, the one terabyte model. No, it looks like I have the 500 gigabyte model. So if you have, you know, the ability to, I'd recommend getting the biggest Mac Studio you can purchase. Now we can go and click the X button. But again, if you're new to Mac OS, you have a couple buttons up here. You can click X to close out of it, the minimize button, and this should be a full screen button that is most of the time available. Clicking the X button, the next little portion we have is, you know, force quitting applications. You can sleep, restart, or shut down your Mac Studio. You can get straight into the jump lock screen. You can log out of your specific Mac Studio as well by clicking the log out user. Now, depending on which application you're in, these options will pretty much go ahead and change. So you always will pretty much have your finder if you're on your home screen. This will pretty much just be your file browser. You can go ahead and go to certain files. You can go to a certain folder by clicking go. And again, these will change per application. For example, if I'm under like Safari, so if I go down here, click Safari, you'll see that the little prompt up here did change. So keep that in mind, but you can even see here, we do have our full screen button. So if we wanna go ahead and full screen it, we can go and click full screen here, and we can go ahead and actually full screen our application. We can go and click here to go out of it, and we can go and click the X button to pretty much go out of it too. Now on the top left corner, we do have our Wi-Fi signal, we have our search bar, so we can go and search for anything within our Mac Studio. We can go and click out of it here. You can go and click on the control panel setting right there to go and get into a little bit more of some options. If you're new to Mac OS, this is pretty much the same as I think on Windows or even on an iPhone or Android. This is your control panel. You can quickly configure your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirPlay options. You can go and turn on a focus mode. You can turn on screen mirroring too. You can also change the not only the display, but the sound option of your Mac OS too. So if you want it higher or lower, we can go and configure it. And luckily for you, the Mac Studio actually has a built-in speaker. It's not crazy amazing, but for it having a built-in speaker, it's actually pretty convenient to be honest. Now you can click on the time right here to kind of see more widgets. You can also see a lot of other things you can go and configure here too, which is really awesome. Now clicking out of it here, you'll pretty much have your home screen. Now these things, like I mentioned, will change if you want to add a specific application to your home screen, you can just drag it up and now you will have if you want to add different files or applications here, if I go and click here, for example, I don't think I have any applications or anything downloaded for the most part, but if you ever want to add a file, you can just drag it and bring it to your home screen like that. Now the dock is something you can go and configure. So Finder should always probably be there and you'll always have like the recycle bin on the other side if you want it to be there, but all these other things can be configured. So Launchpad will pretty much take you into all the applications that you have. If you have a magic keyboard, this button, aka like F4, will go and take you into the same spot. F3 will give you into little desktop mode that you can go and configure. And there's brightness toggles too, but this monitor doesn't support it. And now Safari browser is our built-in browser, so you can go ahead and use it if you'd like. But most people switch to Chrome, but I typically use Safari. There's a bunch of these other applications that I won't really bore you with, but the App Store is one of those and there's a lot of other applications here that I won't really bore you with. The App Store is one of those specific applications that people use a lot in order to download applications and the such. Now if we can actually, and these are some applications that I download temporarily, and here's our little trash bin. Now I do wanna go ahead and bring you straight into another mode that's specifically focused towards our Mac Studio. So if we go and make our way over to our you know, Apple logo up here, now System Preferences has a bunch of stuff built in. We have our general settings, desktop and screen saver, a bunch of different things. But one really cool thing that we have within Mac Studio is under Energy Saver. So I'd recommend clicking on Energy Saver right now. And when you're here, you'll see a couple of different things. You'll see, you know, prevent your Mac from powering off or whatever the case is. So you can go and configure this however you want to. Now, if you do have an M1 Ultra Mac Studio, you should be able to go and configure basically a more powerful mode. So if you do have an option here that shows that more powerful mode, I'd recommend going through and actually configuring it to turn it on. That's a really cool thing that you have. And if you have that ability, like I mentioned, I'd recommend turning it on. It looks like the Mac Studio I have doesn't have it, which is kind of strange. And that's a quick little breakdown of everything that you can pretty much use on your Mac Studio, at least on the software side. But like I mentioned, when it comes down to the hardware of your Mac Studio, there is still a lot of stuff to discover. This should give you a quick breakdown of a quick, you know, getting guide of how to use your Mac Studio as quickly as possible. But like I mentioned, the M1 Ultra and the M1 Max have a ton of capability. So if you're using this thing for, you know, any heavy intensive apps, you should be good to go.
But if you're even using it for light apps, you know, I would recommend getting a Mac mini or a MacBook at that point. But this is still a machine that's going to last you for a very long amount of time. So some things I'd recommend watching out for, making sure your Mac Studio has enough room to breathe. If you have it super close to the wall, because this thing does have fans on the back, like we mentioned before, you may want to go ahead and make sure there's enough room in the back for this thing to, you know, expel air. I can even, even feel it now that the air is kind of coming out a little bit more. So if it doesn't have enough air to come in and come out, then I would recommend having some room. Also, as I mentioned before, because these Thunderbolt ports do support, you know, monitors, you can plug in up to four monitors, as I believe. And I think this Mac does support multiple monitors via daisy chain. So you can do the same thing as well. I would recommend utilizing that Ethernet port however which way you want to, because there is a lot of power by having a plugged in port rather than having something that's, you know, on a wireless connection, which is still good enough. And I'd recommend, again, not spilling any water on it or anything like that. And because this thing is a new product, I'm expecting software updates to be coming out frequently for this thing, or you know maybe not as frequent for Mac OS. But if there's any, in a, but if there's ever an update available for your Mac Studio, I would highly recommend updating it as soon as you get it. So going through that software update panel that I showed you earlier and updating it that way. Because if you don't and you've never updated, then you'll pretty much have problems on your Mac that you will pretty much have for day one to day 1000 if you're never going to update it. So that is pretty much a quick breakdown of how to use your Mac Studio and some quick little tips of how to use and kind of get a better use out of the specific machine. If you have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.